I'm your rear main seal, and I'm about to ruin your weekend plans and take all your money. Guys, this is a video I hoped I'd never have to make. And this is roughly what you're going to be looking at. Well, we're not going to do a step-by-step -step replacement of this part in this video. We are going to cover some of the symptoms and telltale signs of a rear main seal failing um, so that you can possibly identify if your oil leak is related to this or not. Uh, stay tuned for more info. Guys, this is a video I hoped I'd never have to make. What you're looking at is my 3.6 liter Pentastar engine on my Jeep. Off to the right side, that's the oil pan, and off to the left, that's my five-speed automatic transmission. And what I think that this was probably gonna be is the rear main seal. What you can see here is that um, I've got sort of oil you know, pooling and dripping by the plugs there um, at the front of the transmission bell housing. That's really where it's worst. You can see it actually leaking up about a little more than halfway up the top of the bell housing. Uh, but after you get way up there, which is impossible for me to show you, it does seem to get sort of dry. So I think it's leaking out the back of that rear main seal and probably when I'm driving it for any extended period of time, um, the pressure from the oil pressure is just pushing that oil right through into the transmission bell housing where it's then finding its way out of there. I also had another thought that it might be the, the back or the rear of the oil pan gasket leaking. But when I get close up in there, I don't see any oil beating up really at the back of that oil pan gasket. Um, it's really all seems to be coming from the joint between the transmission bell housing and the motor. Now guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the camera around a bit just so you can see uh, what this leak looks like. If you have a similar type of leak, um, maybe it'll help you diagnose what's going on with your, your own leak in your Jeep or your other vehicle. Again, this is the passenger side. Um, what you're looking at on the left there is the transmission bell housing and then the motor on the right. You can see it's leaking all around there. So we're looking upward. It's the exhaust on the top. On the left, the transmission bell housing. And then down here, that was an exhaust hanger. There's the oil pan and the transmission bell housing again on the left. And we'll move over to the driver's side so you can see what it looks like on the driver's side as well. You can see it's relatively dry everywhere else except that joint, that mating joint, which to me seems real bad. Uh, I do think that this is gonna be a rear main, um, but I'll let you know, I'm about to take it to the mechanic and uh, they're gonna tell me what the damage is here. This is not a repair I'd attempt myself. Um, I'd have to be doing it on my back. I don't, I don't have all the equipment needed to really back the transmission off here. Just to reiterate, here's the driver's side. Transmission oil pan, it's totally dry. So this, this does not look like the oil cooler housing leak. In fact, I know it's not that. Okay, so here it is, guys. Um, just got the Jeep back from the shop. And uh, the issue was the rear main seal as well as the upper oil pan gasket or some might call it the crankcase, crankcase gasket. Both of those were leaking in some way. Um, what they said about the rear main seal, now this is your rear main seal in a Pentastar 3.6 liter, was that it was leaking pretty significantly from the seal and that there was a bunch of oil in the transmission bell housing because of that. 
So unless you've got a lift in your garage and a transmission jack and all the right tools to do this, and a lot of time, you know, considering this isn't a daily driver, you might attempt this. Um, but I think most of you are going to be having a shop do this, and this is roughly what you're going to be looking at um, to get this fixed. Uh, this is about what I expected, that this was going to be between a thousand and twelve hundred dollars um, because the shop labor book says this is an eight to ten hour job you've got you know anywhere between two hundred and three hundred dollars of parts you can see the parts that we need here uh, new rear main seal um, you gotta change the oil as part of this so we're talking about new filter not sure why there's a new vent fitting on the transmission other than maybe when they had to pull that vent off to back it off there. Um, you got to get a new one on there. You got a lot of cleaning to do because there's motor oil all over the place. The bolts uh, and the lock washers are because you got to back the exhaust crossover on the 3.6 liter Pentastar off of um, the the rest of the exhaust there. So of course, we've also got some gasket sealer there, which was used to fix the uh, oil pan gasket. So what we have here is we have the, um, what I would say is the back side or the transmission bell housing side of the rear main seal. And uh, then if we flip it over, um, we've got the, the crankcase side or the pan side of the seal. Um, I was a little bit surprised to see this. This is relatively thin um, compared to what I'm used to seeing. On TJ's, this is a much thicker piece of metal that houses the rear main seal. And then the rear main seal itself is a pretty thick gasket. Now that was a two-piece seal. In the TJ's, this is a one-piece on the 3.6 liter for the JK. Um, so the two-piece seal had it had its own problems, but um, I was kind of talking with my mechanic, and and we couldn't really see any cracks or obvious failures to this rear main seal. It's a surprisingly not very thick material. Um, he kind of likened it to like heat shrink wrapping that you put around electrical connectors, and I, that's kind of what it feels like. And uh, our guess was that it just wore out. I did ask, you know, hey, was there a bunch of mud back there in my transmission bell housing? Is that what happened? Did we just get a lot of stuff in here abrading the seal and it just wore it out that way? And uh, he said no, that there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of mud. Uh, there really wasn't any mud in the transmission bell housing. There was a significant layer of dust. Um, and it's not a surprise that you'd get dust intrusion into your um, transmission bell housing. Um, that's not a sealed environment. There's ways for dust to get in there. And uh, yeah, I've done a lot of dusty driving. There's no question about that. And so uh, my, my working theory is that the dust is just accelerating the wear of the seal and is why it failed earlier. Now, if we look at sort of the inside and outside of this seal, you can see that it kind of has a, a compression lip to it. So this seal is gonna fit over your crankshaft. And if you look at it here from the side, you can see on the, the crankcase side, um, that lip is larger than it is on, than it is on the transmission bell housing side. Now you can see here additionally, we've got another very thin, um, gasket that's been pressed into this piece. This is a stamped piece. Um, and I think this is merely for sealing against the crankcase. Um, when you look at the top here, we've got a bead of, I don't know what, some kind of RTV or some kind of silicone gasket maker um, that I think is sealing basically maybe the joint between the block and the top of the crankcase or the upper oil pan as some may call it. Um, what you're gonna see when I get back under the Jeep is we had to, we had to remake the gasket for the, the upper oil pan or the, the crankcase housing there. And my guess is that when you pull the rear main seal off, there's a high likelihood that you're disturbing that um, gasket or that seal around the back of the upper oil pan 
or that crankcase. And that's why we needed to end up fixing a leak there as well. Okay, so we got the Jeep back after the fix. You can see our Pentastar 3.6 liter oil pan on the right and uh, the block up here on the right and the transmission on the left. The, uh, the other thing that they needed to do here, and you can probably see it behind these transmission cooler lines, is the gasket right there. Now, my mechanic keeps referring to this to as, as the, the oil pan. I've seen this also referred to as the upper oil pan. In my mind, this, this would be the crankcase, but um, upper oil pan, I guess. And you can see there, I've got a brand new gasket there. And the reason that they did that was after replacing the rear main seal, they found that there was a leak from the very back upper corner of that um, part right there. And the gasket had failed. And this doesn't totally surprise me. I thought that this whole thing was gonna have to come out anyways for them to get to the rear main, main seal. It turns out that's not the case. Um, you only have to back the transmission out to get to the rear main seal. but. By doing that, I'm not surprised that it would have disturbed the back of that gasket there and that that needed to be um, reset or I needed a brand new gasket there. So hopefully that's better than what was there before. Additionally, if we move back this way, here you can see the exhaust crossover and on both sides, you're gonna need to undo both of those bolts, that's why we got some new bolts there. Um, but you're gonna need to undo both of those and pull the exhaust away there in order to back the transmission out. Okay, so what else can I tell you about this? Um, our oil pan here, you'll see this does not have a new gasket on it. Um, you do not need to remove the lower oil pan in order to get to the rear main seal. You only need to back the transmission off, which is a fair job in itself. but. You do not need to do this. Just be warned that as part of this process, this upper gasket, you may have to get that off. Um, and that may fail as part of replacing the rear main seal. So just be prepared to do that as well. I am not surprised that it had to be done. 